Welcome to another leadership podcast from the team here at C3 Southwest Washington. To find out more about our church, visit c3swwa.com. Okay, so uh, it's a miracle. Give them a good big hand. And all the, guys, all, the guys, all the guys up here are like, they're like, Shane ain't showing nothing up, baby. And so they're all, every single guy that's up here, and the ladies, you all look beautiful, fantastic people. Um, welcome to our church family. Yeah. Amen. Um, we had a couple of other people that were going to be a part of our interview tonight, and a couple of them were sick, a couple of them weren't able to make it. Um, as we've gone through the, this series, and I'll just kind of talk to you guys a little bit and ask you questions. I gave them questions, and oh my gosh, the terror and the panic for all of them to be on the platform. Somehow, I don't know, Shane texted me today. He thought he had to make a video of this, and I was like, that's awesome. You are willing to make a personal video to answer these questions? No, no he was not. <laughs> and it was just, it was just, just too good. It was priceless. And, and the fact that the entire Mallow family would, would be a part of this is awesome. Yeah. Jocelyn was asking me, say, when do we go up? Oh my gosh. I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm just going to ask some questions. Like, I'm going to ask you, here's the question. Scott, I'm going to have to interview you first. Just to break the ice, somebody give him a microphone. Scott, on a scale of one to 10, be honest. My hair, one to 10. Come on. 11. 11. Did you hear him? Come on, give Scott a big hand, okay? That is a man who, who exercised incredible wisdom because he's trapped up here on the platform and the wrong answer could go really bad because I will invite wrong answered people to maybe let's demonstrate ballet right here on the platform for everybody and then that gets really awkward, but thank you, I appreciate that. Somebody's like, ballet, really, we're gonna do that? Um, what has been, uh, um, during this series, one of the things that we've really looked at, and I'm try, just trying to go backwards a little bit here. Am I going forward or backwards? I'm going backwards, right? Am I at the first slide? Oh, sorry, Dave. Can you take me to the first slide? <laughs> first slide. Slide, slide number one. Okay, there we go. Um, when we started off this series, uh, really it's a series about identity, right? And we talked out of Psalm 139, just as a refresher for all of you, that the scripture there talks about God forming us in our mother's womb. And I'm going to really lean forward just for a second, and, and just so that you know, you are a wonder of God. You were, God was present the moment you were breathed into existence. You, 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 and you, you are more than a biological reaction at the moment mom and dad came together. You're well beyond that. God in his spirit was present the same way he was in the formation of Adam and Eve. And you are created, maybe similarities exist within family lines, but you are uniquely different and intentionally as created by God. And it's, it's remarkable. God loves people. Uh, I heard it described this past week when God was like creating the world. And as the moment came, there was the question, you know what? I, I don't have a Lisa. We need a, this world needs a Lisa. This world needs a Lisa right here and right now in this place. And so God breathed you into existence. I mean, when you think about God working through all of that to create you, it's, it's remarkable. And not just that, it, it's on purpose and for purpose because he knew that there would be a guy who was going to need some help, right? Right? And, and every guy said, every guy said, amen. Amen. I mean, guys, you know, God looked at Adam and said, ooh. Everything else was, and it was good. And he created Adam. And he's like, whoop, adjustment. And then the Bible says he gave Eve. And then he said, very good. Look at scripture through there. The, all the other creation, and it was good. And when he created Adam and Eve, it was very good, because it's that partnership. And so God has worked all of this together, and it's, it's remarkable. Um, not only did God cre do, you know, do this, I'd say it this way. God created you uniquely, on purpose and for purpose. I bet you didn't know that there was a screen back there. Oh, I did. Oh, did you guys? No wonder everybody, while I'm preaching, they're like, what's going on? They're looking behind themselves. Um, 
Sometimes the words are big enough for me to be able to see them, okay? I create the slides, so I'm not blaming anybody but me. God created you uniquely on purpose and for purpose. Uniquely. You are different on purpose. And you are created the way you were on purpose. Um, Shane and Kim, could I, they're, they're, they're such great partners, but they are not the same. Like, Kim brought out her notes. I think why Shane was nervous about tonight was because Kim was being detailed. She does, she works for title company, right? Details, like it matters. She pulled out her notes for tonight. They made my notes look like pathetic. They were like lists and pages, and there was computers and all. And and but that's not that is how God created her. And when she leans into that, she thrives. And Shane, on the flip side, is he shows up and he's ready to go and he's 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 the life of the party. He's been wired that way. And the great thing about making marriage work is to recognize. Your job is to help your spouse be the best version of them, but not change them into a version of you. A kite works well because the string, and the string keeps the kite actually flying. Without the string, the kite takes off, and without the kite, the string is laying in a box. But partnered together, you have a pretty remarkable thing, right? And so it's so cool how God does all this stuff and weaves us all together. Uh, he's created us on purpose and for purpose, and he's positioned us uniquely in our here and now. You, are, you weren't born 200 years ago because God didn't need you here 200 years ago. It would have been cool, right? Maybe. Uh, I kind of like air conditioning. However, um, God's put you not just now, but he's put you here. And, and like in Joe's case, you know, Joe's, I, I don't even know if I can like describe the terminology. Jo Joe's background is in military. He was an officer. And, and in, I, I'm correct, right, an injury allowed him to, well, it didn't allow him. It, that was his dream in lifetime. But he's transitioned into the world of psychology, counseling, and, and that's pretty close. Okay? And so he's looking to get his further in his education. And so he showed up one day in church, and it was awesome. And so he's here and now, but he's been pursuing furthering education. We were praying about Portland uh, for him to be able to go to school there. And now he's kind of dialing in on George Fox. And as that door opens and he steps into it, that becomes his here and now. There's this great confidence that when you follow God, that he leads you a step at a time to exactly where you need to be, right? And what's cool about that is you don't have to make that decision on your own. God's helping to lead you in the direction. You've got other people praying for you. And so there's just a, it's, it's just a great thing to walk with church family. Now, we're not, if he does does have to go someplace far away, he's not going to make it because we kind of like Joe. <laughs> it's not the will of God for him ever to go anyplace. So. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, not really. Um, so, uh, now, interestingly, as we talked about it, the church is much like you. Churches are much like you. There's lots of churches. And Jesus said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Just like the gates of hell are not going to prevail against you. It's not. I mean, hell's going to push against your life, but with God's help, you're, you're, not, you're going to prevail. The gates of hell are not going to prevail. Church is very similar where it's a gathering of God's people. They come together. We walk together. We grow. We invite other people in, and God is building his church. And it's that same creational language that we read about when we read about God forming us. And so I would say the exact same thing in regards to the church. God created our church uniquely on purpose and for purpose, and he's positioned us uniquely in our here and now on purpose and for purpose. And so we took the time during this series to look down through what makes us us, our DNA. We've covered, um, I'm going to have to actually look at the screen behind you because I can't actually see that. But we talked about the 10, if you were to boil our church down to find out the, the 10 big ingredients. Now it doesn't say Jesus is Lord on here because this is not, not what we believe, it's how we live out what we believe. There's a difference between what we believe and then this. This is the flavor of how we live our lives as we believe. And that's true of you. If we were to boil you down into your 10 ingredients, it's the flavors that make up you. It'd be, you know, probably a similar list, but different. But for our church family, this is specifically us. It's not just a list. This is really who we are. Church is our family. The kingdom is our foundation. Prayer is definitely our arsenal. Uh, the word is our weapon. We hear people praying and quoting scripture and standing on the word of God. 
in our church pretty frequently. Spirit is our source. And we lean into the Holy Spirit. We can't do this on our own. Uh, faith is our posture. Transformation is our expectation. Generosity is our response. Love is our tone. And our, our final message, I think that was last week, fun is our flavor. And it's biblical. Okay? Good deal. Okay. You're like, please, can this get over? I didn't know I was going to be. Kim, Kim is like, I thought we were going to get a quick interview and I was out of here. No, Kim, it's going to drag on if I'm in control. You guys nervous? What? Police is like, how did I end up in the front row here? Why well, wanted to sit in the back? It's because your husband pushed you out in the front. <laughs> oh, I, I could tell. I, I was going to tell you a little comedy sketch, but we don't have time to, for it. So, anyways, so we're going to talk tonight about our favorite ingredients. What I want have asked these guys to to lean into are some questions on just kind of defining that thing that attracts them because we we get a lot of visitors. Well, every church hopefully gets a lot of visitors, and sometimes it's not a right fit. Sometimes you visit a place and you. Either you're looking for something or there's uh, something that will capture you and it doesn't just click. But these guys have been here for a while and I'm assuming they're going to be here for a long time. And so I want to kind of lean into the, the intentionally us. What is your favorite ingredient? Because there's a strong flavor in our room. A lot of you, how many of you didn't grow up in a church that's, that's like ours? Right? And how many of you grew up in a church way less demonstrative? There's no kids spinning in the altar. Anybody? How many of you grew up in a church where nobody smiled? How many of you grew up where you're terrified, like, going to church, okay? Yeah, I did, I did too. And then you walk into this, and you're like, what is going on in this place? All right? Um, and, and for some of you, that's, that's probably been the case. But I wanted to kind of, like, take a peer into their lives and try to get a feel for um, kind of uh, what, what it was that you experienced when you walked into the door and, and maybe what grabbed onto you. So I won't ask all of you all four questions, okay, but I will ask every one of you something. Scott's already won the day, though. I mean, ele- he gave me an 11 on the hairdo. You know how much time I put into this? Like 30 seconds every single week I put to trim this thing down with my beard trimmer. So, um, so here's the question we're going to talk about. Name one or two ingredients of our church flavor that were foreign to you and describe your reaction, your reaction to them at first. Like you walk in, you're like, whoa, I don't know if I've seen that before. Um, I'll ask it this way. Who wants to go first? Anybody want to volunteer to answer this question? Joe does. Joe does. Joe's not afraid. Come on. Somebody can, can Shane, let me steal the microphone from you for a second. I know Joe. Joe was like, a, come on. What, what was the flavor? Who said that? Was that you? <laughs> Did you? Jameson, did you volunteer him? Yeah. I'll call you up here. Right. We'll be doing some ballet here in a second. So what was the flavor that stood out to you? Um, you know, it was covered last week, you know, about fun is our flavor here. You know, I grew up, uh, I'm, for those of you who don't know, I'm from the deep south. Uh, deep. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Swampy. <laughs> I mean, I mean, man, yeah. Like, like kinda, I know my accent doesn't tell much of it, but uh, catch me when I'm tired. I grew up in New South in like a kind of traditional Southern Baptist church, and you know the um, you couldn't be a deacon if you didn't wear a suit. Nice. You know, uh, Ooh. and it was like I'm not, I'm not kidding. Like, <laughs> no, I, I've been in those churches. And I, um, it was a, just a very different experience. Now, I, I I was in the military. I traveled around a lot. I've been to a lot of different churches around and different denominations and stuff. But coming here, where you know, like you were talking about last week, there is joy. Which is part of the whole, and it's actually commanding. Yeah. <laughs> that, you, that you will have joy, you know, from the being in the spirit, being with other Christians, and actually being able to step in this place, not as an obligation, right. or a status symbol, or any of that, but to actually come here and that the spirit, the natural fruit of that is joy. It is fun. It's a fruit of the spirit. Absolutely. It's good. Good, Joe. Anybody else? Come on, give them a hand. You can clap after every single one of these people. Right? Who else wants to share a lot? What was, your, what was the one or two ingredients that stood out to you that you were like, whoa, you didn't expect that or it was new for you? Pass the microphone up. Let's go, Jaden. Um, uh, so mine's kind of a mixture of fun as a flavor as well, but also kind of loves our tone because when you come to a church that's not as big, of, we went to some other church and it was huge and quiet. and uh, It wasn't quiet, but no one was really talking. 
here, everyone's kind of like intertwined. They all know each other, and like we, you touch on like Christmas parties and stuff like that, and just the little stuff, and it's cool to nice. see like how everyone knows each other and cares for each other. Is that good? Way to represent our young people. Right there. Come on. We got some great students in our church. And, and I'll say this, that uh, we've said this before. You're not the church of tomorrow. You're the church today. Like, you're not the next generation. We, we value our students. Like, you guys are the focus now. You're, you can be involved with anything you want, run anything you want. Um, right? You know you can. Okay, so, so, so great stuff. Anybody else want to? Shane, sure, come what? on, come on. Let's break the ice over here. Shane, stand up. Let's do a ballerina thing. Okay, come on, let's go. Speed skaters? I don't know if that's a ballerina thing. Uh, mine would probably be church is family. I do not come from church background. I've never been to church really since my mom forced me to go back when I was a little kid. Um, but when I walked into the garage at the hub, I was like, dude, what, what is this? But, <laughs> but by the time I walked out, I was like, I like that dude, and I want to come back here. Yes. So with, with that. It's our I sales think, pitch. Yeah. You like the dude, you'll come back. That's right. I love it. But through that, you know, I've been going, I don't even know how long it's been, but I have friends in here now that I didn't expect to make friends at church. That's just not how I've been my whole life. You know, you're at Steve. I see him pretty much every day. I get to yell at him. Nice at the gym, the gym, early in the morning, I, I <laughs> see God, I see my wife, and then I see Shane <laughs> yelling at me yeah. but, like, at Brenton, the gym. I hit Brenton up all the time, <laughs> teach me how to use my trainer that I just got, and, you know, he calls me, I'm not a big phone call person, but when he calls, I answer, and, like, he's talking about Bre Brenton in Brenton the back in there. The back. How many of you, you get a case, well, I don't want to have you do that, because some of you would be like, how come I don't get called, you know, but I, if there's ever anybody who I know will contact me at some point if something happened. Brenton would be one of the guys, hey, buddy, how you doing? And that's like, yeah. that's a big deal. And it, 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 it inspired me to be like letting people in because I never really let people in. And this place it just makes me happy to be in here and happy to be accepting to people that I don't know, that I don't know. Uh, cause nobody knew me in here and now I have a ton of friends. So yeah. it's great. What's, yeah, it's super cool. Um, I just wanted to, you know, it's a remarkable thing, and I celebrate all these guys. I'm, I'm fans. Like, I'm a fan. Like, uh, Shane committed to Kim that he would come to church, even though it wasn't his thing, because he just wanted to honor her. And he wanted, you know, there were some things going on. That he, wanted to, he wanted to support her. And I thought, man, that's super cool. Like, he won me there. Um, and what has been cool is I remember the day they walked in. It's back in the, in the garage when we were having multiple services. Like you had a mask service and then kind of in between. Then the third service was no mask. And when Shane and Kim and, and Raina walked in, it's like, you know, you, how do you miss that in that little tiny garage? This big guy. Pretty sure he's like coming to get me. So I'm like, come on, Brenton, back me up. I know, you, I know, you're, I know you're security. Maybe you're packing. I, I don't think I could take this guy. And... Uh, they got up at the end of the gathering and just, I was like, they left. And I was like, I oh, will never see them again, <laughs> you know, in my mind. And uh, then they came back like two weeks later. And there was a small place on the planet that I grew up going to every year. It's called Shelter Island. And on Shelter Island, is a little tiny camp, Camp Quinnipet, that I would go to every year. It just so happened in that gathering, I was telling a story. And Shane worked as a bartender in a bar that was just across the street, basically, quarter, quarter, mile, quarter mile, mile away. And when he heard that, there was this great connection. And here's the cool thing. You know what he did? He called up somebody from the, at the bar and had them go down and buy me a bunch of stuff from Camp Quinnipet. And he's like, I know this may not fit you, but I just want to, and, and I had stickers, and I had a hat, and a <laughs> bunch of cool stuff. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I need to get saved. I need Jesus in my life. <laughs> it's like, so... Isn't it, isn't it remarkable how God weaves our lives all together? You know, I'm, I'm looking at Jamie sitting here, and, man, we'll love to hear families in church tonight. Um, I, gosh, all that you guys have been through. I, when I first met Jamie, it's been some months ago, I, I knew that Brenton had invited him, and I was like, so you guys, you and Brenton, good friends, right? He's like, well, he, he, so, he was my realtor. 
It's like, oh, well, you've probably been to his Christmas party. Like, everybody on the planet goes to his Christmas party. He's like, no, I've not, I've not been to that. And I was like, so, like, so is your realtor? He's like, yeah, but he texts me all the time just to say, <laughs> hey, buddy, how you doing? And I, who else does that? So we decided to come to the church. And I'm like, it's remarkable how God weaves our lives all, t- all together, right? Very cool. Um, okay, to move on to the next question, some of you think, yeah, okay, like Lisa's like, no, I like question too. Lisa, get the microphone because you're, you're coming next. You're up. Okay. Um, oh, name one or two ingredients of our church flavor that have challenged or impacted you and or benefited you the most and how. Like, when you've, as you've experienced your, our church family, like, what is the thing that has, like, really pushed you in a good way to a better spot in life? <laughs> Sorry. You're okay. Um, I would say that, well, I was going to choose love. And the reason why, I'm just going to go on a yeah. different tangent a little You're, bit. There's no tangents okay, here. Okay, okay. Trust um, me. <laughs> these people know what a tangent is. <laughs> and it's probably not going to happen here. No. Um, so. <laughs> I feel bad for, like, Miriam's been in. But her pastor for 20 years, she's like, no, 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 no. You don't understand tangent. It's way, whatever you're about to say, it's way, 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 way. Right? Um, We correct? I I would say the love that is in the church. Um, Everyone that prayed for Jaden and we hadn't been coming very long, it meant so much to me that everyone cares so much to pray for one another. And um, it, it just really showed me. It's hard. I'm more shy and um that's why you're in the front row talkative yeah sister the lord knows exactly what you need (laughs) he will bust your world up and help you to shed all that 60 seconds you know to talk to people is really challenging for me so (laughs) you're doing great (laughs) this is yeah i'm totally out of my shell like you were saying this is awesome did you have a nickname as a child pizza pizza (laughs) i don't know why i asked that question but i'm gonna tell you what that answer is priceless, and from here, so let it be written, so let it be done. As long as it doesn't offend you, pizza, sister pizza. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. So, yeah, um, but everyone coming together and praying for one another and loving one another and asking how we're doing and genuinely caring and you and leading prayer and caring about mm-hmm. us and not knowing us the second time we came, like we got to know you and... We just really love it here and appreciate everyone well, so I, much. Am I correct in, like, the kids came first? Yes. That's Jocelyn. a pretty big yeah. draw. Mm-hmm. Like, your kids want to go to church? <laughs> like, you guys want to go to church? What? Like, yeah. so, no, I need to go with you and find out what's going on at that <laughs> church, right? Yeah. I remember the first time you guys came in, Scott stood out because, like, I'm like, who is that guy? <laughs> I'm like, man, he's like, I feel like I could hang out with that guy. Like, he's dressed contemporary cool. Like, <laughs> he'd be security at Gas Monkey Garage type stuff. Like, and I love that. I love that scene. I'm like, I got to meet this guy. And then when I, then it's just awesome being able to meet you guys. And, and, and you guys were excited about your kids and all that was going yeah. on. I think it's pretty neat how God definitely, he, how he works that good stuff. And, and Lisa works at, uh, for a veterinarian that's across the street from our new facility, basically, yep, right? Yep, pretty much. And if I'm correct, Scott, you just got your journeyman's card. Is that correct? In, am I going to get this right? In, uh, it's um, insulation in com- oh. on a commercial <laughs> level, right? So give him a big, that's like huge. <laughs> Super cool. It's awesome. Okay, so Jocelyn, are you going to jump in there? Have we got, have we got to you yet? No. We haven't asked you? I want you to sing for me the ABCs backwards. No, thank you. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> the rebellion of students these days. Uh, Jocelyn, tell me like the ingredient that's, that has like pushed you, that's been really good, you didn't necessarily expect, but it's helped you to maybe move into some better spaces in life. So the church is our family thing. I don't know, like, we, like Jade mentioned, we went to a bigger church for a couple services, and... Um, not really talking to anyone you kind of just went and left but when I started like talking to the people here like the first time I feel like I actually like started opening up and like hugging people and stuff was um you can't get <laughs> I didn't like hugging either until I started coming to this church I was like they won't let you go they're like ah! 
I'm like, oh my gosh. Well, I was leaving and Trish came up and gave me a hug. Oh, she's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. I just was like, wow, that was really nice. And now I'm like more open to it. So. It's wonderful that everybody loves Miss Trish. After a while, it just gets a little irritating. It's like she's everybody's favorite, so that's no, good. Uh, Kim, do you want you want that question? Sure. Okay. I didn't read my notes, so. <laughs> uh, let's see. The biggest challenge, I think, was um, prayer is our arsenal. Um, just for sure, I think I know prayer is our arsenal, but. Um, well, it's but one thing, it's a truth. It's another thing to actually function in that, right? Yeah, yeah. and I think um, for me, I was raised in the church until I was about 18, and then I didn't go much after that. And um, so I have the foundation of prayer, but this church for me really feels like the real deal because um, I went to a mega church in between there for a little while, and I like they would kind of usher the pastor out, and I never actually would meet him or anything. But um, each person that I met and spent time with, like, sows into my life, and there's no, like, getting around that, you know, <laughs> there's no, like, um, That's true. saying a prayer request and not having people check up on you or text you, like, it's the real deal, and um, Shane and I were even talking about, you know, like, you go to work, and someone says, how was your weekend, and you say, good, how was yours, but, like, here, you don't do that, you say, I'm really struggling, or it's real here, and, um, some transparency, that's a good thing, yeah, right, yeah. and um, in church, you know, we, I learned um, how to not pray, like, God, if you want to um, save us from the storm, that would be great, and for me, from being at a, um, a church where you hold the hymnal properly and um, stand up and sit up straight and everything, um, yes, uh, it was really weird to tell God what's going to happen. Like, that was uncomfortable for me a lot. And um, But as we started doing it, like, I think in service, I was like, okay, that's great. I'll practice that this week. And then Steve's like, okay, do it now. <laughs> and um, so we did that. And, like, I have to say, like, that the coolest words I've ever heard come out of Shane's mouth for me was him praying for me, like, Fervently is the word okay, stop right there just for a second. I want you to listen to that. When you pray for somebody else, okay, it is powerful, especially when you pray for her and she prays for you. To listen to someone else, ask God to bless your life is a powerful thing. Lean in and take advantage of it. Yeah. Not just in the husband-wife realm, but I, I know for a fact that Shane has dealt with a few people now in the gym. Because Shane, you know, he's come, not only come in, but he's like, hey, listen, I'm, I'm ready to follow Jesus. J uh, Shane has specifically asked, and I'm going to honor this because he's really big. <laughs> <laughs> but I would honor it anyways. Can I get baptized in the new building? And, which is super cool. And we have, we have a few people, I just, just so you know, we have a few people going to get baptized one of the first Sundays in the new building. But Shane's going first. He's asked to go first. And, but th there's, a, there's a power when you actually pray. You could say prayer is your arsenal, but do you, do you bust out the guns and go do, go do duty, go do business? And, and <laughs> I do duty, you do duty. Let's, let's move on. <laughs> but, like, do you use them? And, I, and, and so you're learning how to do that. And you're learning how to, as, as mama bear, like lean in and not, oh, Lord, I pray that you'll watch over my children. No, no, no. You walk through the house. God, your hand is on my child. God, I'm trusting. I'm knowing you're going to lead my child. Devil, back off. I speak blessing. And you start, you start pushing against the things that are trying to push your children in wrong directions. And you pray that way. It's, it's, not, it's, it's, it's agreeing with God out loud as to what should happen on earth that he's already said should happen in heaven, right? Right, so. Yeah, go ahead. Um, we came to church because uh, struggling with my daughter with, like, some depression issues and COVID and um, just really, like, so many kids not knowing where to go. And I started telling Shane, like, I need a Tuesday night rally. And he's like, what are you talking about? Like, like um, presidential kind of stuff or what? And I said, yeah, like, I have felt like I know who I am, but I'm no longer allowed to be me in this world anymore. And, um, like, that's why we came back to church. And, um, you know, whatever it takes to get us here, uh, here we are. And I think we came January a year ago. So um, so what what I have found um, besides so many things on this list, but the, um, 
the word is a weapon that really came up for me in the last couple of weeks because, um, because like I've lost permission, no, I haven't, but I feel like I've lost permission to be mom again. And so like taking charge with the stuff that's going on with my daughter and like, um, people like Rowena texting me, what about this? What about this with your daughter's counselor? What's going on? And, um, just feeling like it's okay for me to be mama bear again. And I was sitting with my kids, my older daughter who doesn't live with us anymore. And they like popped into my head, um, Hofers were talking to us about how to pray, like have your kids pray for each other, and um, and so it like popped into my head like my two daughters are not best friends. They love each other, but they don't like each other so much. Ten years apart. And so <laughs> Sounds like, like every other house that I know. Yeah, yeah, it's like you know I pray for my people at work that I struggle with, and um, it's not easy. And so I it was like the same thing. And so it popped into my head. Um, you know, the word is our weapon. Uh, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And we were going out of town the next day, and so everybody was under my roof. <laughs> and so I was like, um, I was like, well, here's what we're going to do, guys. And they were like, uh, no, I don't live here anymore, and da, da, da. And I was like, well, then you can go sleep outside, because as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And they did it, and, like, their words were beautiful. Yeah. And, um, Kim, Kim, Kim made them pray yeah. Yeah. for and, one another. And I feel like in this world, like, I don't have permission anymore to do anything. I do, you know, and, and our stuff, our list doesn't change, and I thank God for that, because it's like, we can still be who we are, and we still have our list of goals. So right, so, yeah. so cool, and mom and dad, lean forward, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord, and you know, this idea, well, I don't want to force my kids into spiritual things. Well, you force them to go to school, <laughs> in some cases, uh, you force them to take showers, you're not terrified that they'll reject, like, hygiene for all of lifetime. Oh, I'm never going to take a shower. My parents forced me to take a shower as a child. You lean in, and as long as your children, even if they're adults, live under your roof. My parents moved in with me for a, uh, for a couple of months, and I just told my parents, I said, look, my dad was a pastor, so, I, you know, this is... Um, it, it already kind of applied, but I said, look, when you move into the house, um, rule number one, we all go to church. Now, you don't have to come to my church, but we all go to church. He's like, well, absolutely. And we had a couple of other things like that. It's just, I'm responsible to lead my family, and I'm less worried about them rejecting the thing that I'm pushing them in the right direction. I'm more confident that they're going to experience the presence of God in the house of God more likely than staying at home watching Dexter. And hopefully they're not watching Dexter, but they probably are. So um, is that okay? Scott, I'm going to have you go up next, but I'm going to change the question if that's okay. I don't know if I... Uh, name one or two uh, people that embody one of those specific ingredients of our church flavor in the church that you, you personally admire. And I know th what was great about your fa you guys' family is like they all answered the questions and sent them back to me. I could tell they were like getting ready and prepping, and they were just great answers. And I really love Scott's answer, especially on this one. It was really, really good. Well, so for myself, I have a few faith and posture, a little bit unsure. But when I see my children and how they have gravitated towards the church and they participate, it really drives me to want to be a part of the church and That's participate so cool. as well. Yeah, so so they are cool. the driving force that has got me to want to get involved. That is so, like, super cool. Like, you know, um, Scott, there's a scripture that says, um, it's a new t Old Testament scripture and a New Testament scripture, that when God begins to do his thing, that he will draw the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of their children back to their fathers. We have lived through several generations where kids blow their parents off to go and look for their own thing. And uh, parents very often blow kids off to go and do their own thing. You can always know that God is involved when dad looks at the kids and his heart is for them. But the kids look back at mom and dad and their heart is for them as well. It's just such a cool, cool thing. And I love that God's captured your heart in that spot. That, to me, that's, a, that's like big. Like my kids, I love what's happened in their life and I want to be a part of that. That is super. So I just, I, I don't have a hat on, but I tip my, I tip my hat to you, okay? Uh, anybody else you want to answer that question? Joe. So when I first came to this church, I moved here in, what was it, like February or March of 2020? It was right after I got out of the military. Yeah. Something like that. Um, 
I showed up here in a very tumultuous time in my life. Um, I, like I said, I, uh, you kind of mentioned it. I had some injuries that basically uh, meant I couldn't do my combat job anymore. They offered me a desk job, and I said, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> That's not really why I'm here. Uh, and so, but you know, but the army was kind of, it was kind of my career. And then uh, as I was getting out to my, uh, my wife left me, uh, we've been married about six years and it was, it was a real hard time. And like, it kind of <laughs> put a lot of things into question. Yeah. Uh, I tried out a few different churches all in the area and no one, none of them really felt quite right. Um, I walked in and John, uh, when we were in the garage was the first person I was just walking into this weird church in a garage <laughs> and yeah <laughs> it's like and there was John at the door and he was like hey welcome you know and he shook my hand you know yeah. and he uh he kind of told me he's like yeah it's a temporary thing you know kind of uh, temporary <laughs> permanent right <laughs> temporary but permanent. it was like you want to talk about a church being family like I felt instantaneously like a part of this thing, like these are not like, you know, and it's, it, it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, oh, this is just the, the greeter guy for the day or whatever. It's like, no, like he, like he really, like, and I remember I, like, I, I don't know, like I was very emotionally full at that time and I let him have it. I'm sorry. Like, I just like, <laughs> bam, hit him with the whole story and he was right there for me. Yeah. You know, and like, uh, we're a big fan of John and Barb. <laughs> Good people. I, I think I've already said it publicly, but I, I uh, we're all we're all fans. I mean, we love you guys, but my expect I just spit on myself. I apologize. <laughs> Usually, I spit on the people in the front row. I'm spitting on myself. Um, I my expectation for you guys, and it includes your sister. She's part of this whole thing. That you know, the Lord is He's used you through your life. But this is a season of concentrated use from God, which is a remarkable thing. Who dreamed that most people are, are ramping down, pulling back? Because, you know, you, you, you kind of get into a retirement mentality. You guys keep on leaning forward, leaning in. And I just want to commend you guys. We love you. We love that posture. And let, let the end be greater than the beginning, right? To be more effective at the end. Not that you're at the end. That doesn't. That's not what I'm trying to convey. And I love. I love Joe. You as a younger guy. That that was. That's the connection spot there, which is which is super cool. Um, I'm running out of time. I can see there's blinking red back there, and there's children, <laughs> children weeping. Uh, probably. Can I uh, bring me up to the next slide, Dave? Um, just what was the last and final question? I'll see. Maybe I'll have one or two of you answer this. Um, name one or two of the uh, ingredients in our church flavor that feel like you still have some work to do. In other words, you know, you've looked around, you've seen, you're looking at the list, you've heard the preaching and the teaching, and it's come from everybody. We've had not just me speaking on this, but we've had multiple speakers. What's that one or two? Uh, what's the one thing that you look at the list and you're like, I don't have that yet, but man, I want more of that. I want to embody more of that. Lisa's like, now she's like, no, no, give me the microphone. Here I am. Hello, people at home. <laughs> Mine would be um, faith and <laughs> She's posture. like, no, I, I was not doing that. In my <laughs> mind, that's how it played Thank out. Thank you. Um, faith and posture. Um, when I listen to Jenny pray, oh, yeah. um, it really moves me, and I hope to have faith in God. And that close relationship someday, like you do, it. You will. I, I can't even explain you don't, the way it makes me You don't feel. need to hope. <laughs> you don't. It's not, like, it's not like basketball. I mean, some people will never be in the NBA. There's no chance genetically. I mean, it's just not. That's not how it works with spiritual things. You just lean forward and participate, and you will embody that. You, you already do. You're already starting to. You're not the same person that walked, right? Am I telling the truth? That's not the same person that walked in here because you, you, there's a hungry and thirsting after righteousness or, or the things that God has, same thing, and you naturally lean forward and gravitate towards that, and you want that. God's not going to withhold that. Absolutely. Thank you. So that's, that's super yeah. cool. Thank Good you. job. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and I just want to say the singing 
that the girls do. They do um, great. Yeah, I mean, I could name everyone right now, but just because I'm thinking of Jenny, Abby, when she sings, like it moves me it's amazing like it gives me chills Abby. sometimes Abby. and and val and um alana and i don't know everyone is just so amazing yeah. and you can just feel jesus like coming out of their soul it's amazing that's so cool that's awesome anybody else you want to answer go ahead um prayers are arsenal is one that i want to work on more just praying at night and just mm -hmm. all throughout the day just praying more in general to try and just build my relationship with God more and mm -hmm. get more comfortable with it and just start to do it more often because I know it really can work wonders. So Absolutely. J uh, great, right? Uh, it's a good thing to want. Jaden, um, just just lean into it. Like wh whenever there's an opportunity, somebody says, hey, who wants to pray? Just just jump in the front. Just to exercise that thing. And, and you're sitting next to a guy who has worn out paths literally around his apartment like, get around some people who know how to pray and ask them, so what do you do in your prayer time? Because it's more, you know this already, it's more than just, oh, God, I pray that you would bless me and help me to get an A. It's, it's spending time with God. And so get around some of the older guys. You know, I can't believe I'm calling you older, but uh, <laughs> oh, older guys who, who do pray, who know how to pray, right? He's like five years younger than me, so it's, you know, I just, I want him to feel good about that. Okay, sorry, Joe. Um, anybody else? Like, what's the thing that inspires you? But, you know, it's, a, it's out of, re it's not, I'm not quite there, but I'm looking for it. Anybody else want to answer that? Kim, I can tell you want to answer that. Um, I think churches, our family is one that's already coming um, through so strongly for me, but I know that we struggle to reach out. And um, I know, like Stephen Rowena said to us early on, this house is going to be filled with people. And I was like, it how is. many? <laughs> how many people? It's one of those, when the door ring, doorbell rings, it's like, Who's there? <laughs> what do you want? Uh, but, um, but like, I struggle to get out of my own head, and I think of, um, you know, like, I have nothing good to give to anybody else, and nobody won't really wants to hang out. And whenever I do, I find that everyone else is just like me and has their own hang-ups, and um, that I am blessed 20 times what I ever think. But um, although that one's already, like, huge in my life from this church, I have a lot of the ways to go, and you always preach about being social, and I'm like, he's looking right at me. Always. That's all I <laughs> preach about. That's all I preach about. It's the only thing. Sounds like God is trying to speak to you, so that's good. You're hearing. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, um, for time's sake, do me a favor. Why don't you guys stand with me, and uh, we're going to pray over you. Why don't you guys stand, and we're going to dismiss you. We're going to pray real quick. We've gone over uh, by 10 minutes. Do me a favor when you go to pick up your kids in just a second. I want to have you um, make sure you appreciate them, love on them. Let them know it's not my fault. I was taken hostage. There, there was an incident and I was out of control. Just, just show always our C3 Kids family leaders your appreciation. Um, I think that I'm going to do this um, to pray. I'm going to pray in just a second. Um, but I'm going to have Jaden pray over you guys because we want to give him the opportunity to excel. Right? It's a great opportunity when you say, Lord, I really want to get better at something. And the Lord says, here's your chance. Okay? So no pressure at all. Will you do me a favor? Eyes open, looking, looking at us, because we don't have to close our eyes. There's, you know, we can look at each other and pray for each other. All right? Oh, you got the microphone. He's, oh, he is like ready to go. All right, let's do this. Um, Lord, let's all just get with each other and get better at whatever we're trying to achieve and start getting with each other and caring for each other more and with our relationship with God building we can expand in whatever we're trying to get at and really like <laughs> keep going uh -uh. keep going you got um, it you got <laughs> um, <laughs> just pray a blessing on them okay um Lord Jesus, please give everyone in the crowd uh, blessings and uh, like gratefulness and just all the love and good luck that they're gaining and all the. the geez, I'm sorry, I'm really freezing up. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> uh, 
You're good. You are totally um, good. <laughs> Listen, there's no bad prayer. Now, when you get to the end, when you hit the spot where you're like, what do I do now? You're like, amen. Yeah. <laughs> amen. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Let me, do me a favor. Let's, let's just pray over these guys. Lord, I thank you for these families. I look at them. They're great people. You breathe them into existence. They make up their great brothers and sisters and moms and dads and guys and family. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. Uh, and friends and, and, and people who serve the church. Lord, we thank you for each one of them. I pray abundant blessing. Open doors for them. Continue to prosper them financially. Pray for complete healing in Jesus' name. I pray for just favor at work. She loves her job, but God, I pray for favor at work. I pray for open doors and opportunities and some dreams to get in that head, God, of what you have for her, things she's never even dreamed about. Lord, that house will be filled, and they will lead people as they've been led. They will lead someday, and they will influence people the way that they've been influenced. These are already people who already have a lot to offer. Lord, uh, I, I just thank you for your blessings, your favor, your goodness, and for all the good things that you're doing, God. I pray you, you redeem, redeem what the enemy stole. God, I, I just speak in tenfold in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I pray over everyone in the room. I pray that they walk in your paths. They experience your goodness. You are the God of more and more and more and more. Just pour out over them. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening. To find out more about our pastors, leaders, and what we do at C3 Church, visit our website at c3swwa.com.